Hello, Mbizo, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you, and you are too kind. Oh, we love you. It's always a good day when we get to see your face. Um, okay, so let's, let's chat some more AFCON. You did a fabulous job yesterday of kind of giving us some, some of the overview of the competition, but we talked a little bit about how this is a competition. This can be a huge opportunity for, for some players to, to serve as a showcase for them. Can you speak on some of the players who historically in this competition have sort of raised their level and the, the footballing world took notice? I mean, there's a, there's a number of them. And of course, uh, it, it usually happens with the younger players, players who are playing uh, in, the Af uh, in the CAF championship, right? Players who are playing domestically, particularly in your larger leagues uh, across North Africa, Southern Africa, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, for example, um, uh, there's uh, the Zambian striker who's now playing at Leicester, who's one of my favorite players, uh, Pat Sandaka. I mean, he was huge for Zambia all across um, the the Afcons and uh, as well on the continental competition and obviously he hasn't uh, become the player we had expected him to become at Leicester City but uh, he was extremely prolific uh, in Austria for Red Bull Salzburg and so uh, you have examples like that of players who really uh, who really step up to the challenge on the continent uh, and demonstrate what they can do and earn themselves a big move to a European club. And Bizo, talk to me about a player playing at one of my former clubs, Kudus. How much pressure is on him in this uh, AFCOM uh, competition? Oof, so much, so much. I mean, uh, despite Ghana having quite the powerful squad on paper, they haven't really gotten it together uh, in practicality on the pitch. Uh, and so certainly his magic is going to be critical. He's been in top form, uh, but, you know, I, I think that's pretty normal. I don't think he's had a bad game since I've been watching him play. Uh, and so really Ghana's going to need him to be something of a savior uh, and really lift the rest of the team. Uh, and we've seen it happen before, where Ghana's kind of languishing in a game and uh, he just brings that spark, that little bit of magic. So certainly the entire nation and the entire continent is expecting a big performance from him. They, they, have, they have players who are playing in Europe. They have some big name players. A lot of potential. But my question to you is, do you believe in Chris Hooten, the, the manager? Because I, I just feel that he hasn't gotten the most out of this, this Ghanaian team. Defensively, it, you would think they'd be a little bit better in the attacking third. And it seems like he's, he's playing a boring style. Yeah, unfortunately, the truth is um, that this happens quite often with coaches that come from uh, European backgrounds uh, into African national teams. There's this tendency to want to make them in the image of European teams, which is slightly more tactical, uh, slightly more disciplined at the back, which is not necessarily a negative. However, they don't always play to the strengths uh, of the teams uh, which they are coaching. Uh, and as much as I wanted Chris to do to do well at Ghana, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to capture the essence of this Ghanaian team, um, whom we've often referred to as the uh, African Brazilians. They were the ones who uh, most closely resembled uh, the flair, uh, the unpredictability, the creativity, the possession style that uh, Brazil often brings to world football. And, and unfortunately, they haven't been able to do that. So there really are big question marks. Uh, and if Ghana don't do well, I, I, I find it hard to believe that he'll continue on with them. And Bizo, talk to me a little bit about Algeria. Obviously, they've got some big names, Arwar, uh, but also they've got Riyad Mahrez, who a, a little bit like Saudi Omani, I think a lot of people are focusing on what's the level at now that you've moved to the Saudi Pro League. How do you think Algeria is going to do? I think Algeria is fantastic. I think on paper they are one of the, the better teams. Uh, for me, Riyad Mahrez, this might be a controversial statement, but he's one of the best African players I, I think I've ever seen play, uh, particularly in the European context. Uh, but they, they also have a team that's quite stacked. Uh, they have a player called uh, Ryan Ait Nouri, which I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with, who just switched allegiances. I think he's a, a fantastic player. Uh, Hossam Awar, who hasn't been with them for, uh, for uh, a long time. But uh, having just switched allegiance, I think he'll be extremely hungry to demonstrate that he's of value and really uh, place the foundation for a longstanding uh, Algerian career. Uh, they also have uh, Faris Chaibi from Frankfurt in Germany, uh, who's also French-born, um, but also has tons and tons of potential. So for me, uh, when you include Mares in that mix, uh, Algeria is certainly a threat to be reckoned with.
And Bezo, uh, I can't believe you put uh, the Ghanaians ahead of the Nigerians for Brazilian flair, but that's another conversation. Let's talk about <laughs> Guinea, a nation that a lot of people over there probably didn't know about. Talk to us about Guinea and their chances and players and one to watch. Yeah, absolutely. On a global scale, uh, Guinea isn't very well known. But in the African context and African football tradition, uh, we consider them among the giants, uh, despite their inability to, to win in recent times. Uh, obviously, Girassi at Stuttgart is absolutely on fire and, uh, you know, he's in the form of his life. He'll be eager to demonstrate that this isn't a fluke, and he is, in fact, one of the elite strikers in the world. Uh, there's another player who's flown under the radar for quite some time, uh, Mukhtar Diaby from Valencia. I mean, for me, this is a, a spectacular player, and he's been massive uh, for Valencia since he signed four years ago, um, after switching allegiance, of course, from, from France as well. Uh, and then there's a, a dormant star in Elax Moriba, who... Hasn't quite kicked on since he's left Barcelona, but this is just another opportunity for him to uh, try to attain those heights that we expected him to attain uh, at the naissance of his career. Um, Bizo, I've played with a, a bunch of players from Mali and in Europe, and uh, they, they've always had this grit about them, supremely technical, uh, and you, you felt like they were always pushing the 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 um, the envelope in Africa in terms of being a, a country on the precipice of being a top tier nation, uh, who who are we? You know, should we be mindful of in this tournament? Who who stands to impress? I'm very happy that you brought up Mali because for me they are also one of the dark horses. Um, I'd actually liken them to Guinea uh, in the context of not being very well known on a global scale, uh, but they are spectacular. And that man right there, for example, Mohamed Kamara, uh, Monaco player, uh, a spectacular player. The engine room, um, he's a box-to-box, -box, you know, has box-to-box -box capabilities, but tends to sit deeper, breaking up the plays, uh, and, and then starting the attacks of his own. And he's a spectacular player. Obviously, there's uh, Bisuma, Haidara, uh, Samseku, but they also have a player who's playing on the continent called Ali Udeng. Um, at Al Ali, and he's been a critical piece of Al Ali's uh, success over the last couple of seasons. I think at one point he was even uh, being connected to Arsenal. So this is a player that's really, really top. Uh, and I know often uh, people don't expect there to be um, top-class players playing on the continent still, uh, but they really are, and Al Udeng is a fantastic example of that. Uh, Mali is one to watch out for. And Biza, I've got two quick questions for you because one is just never enough for me. With Morocco and the run that they had in the World Cup, what's the expectations for them for this AFCOM competition? And two, out of all the nations that we've seen, that you know, the world's known of Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Ivory Coast now, what nation has really come out from nowhere and really developed football-wise that the world over here should pay attention to? Oh, that's a, that's a superb question uh, there, Nigel. Uh, Morocco is uh, an interesting case because obviously after their exploits during the World Cup, uh, there are a, a few that are expecting them to replicate that performance uh, and make a deep run. Some might even have them as favorites. However, when you look at their legacy uh, on the African continent in AFCON, they haven't been the most successful. Um, some might call them overachievers. Some might say that they've played exactly what one would expect them to play. But uh, they they need to demonstrate that they can transfer their their success uh, on the world stage to the African continent, which hasn't always happened in the past. So uh, we'll look to see a, a little bit more of that. I think a team that's come out of nowhere in recent times have, have always had a, a tradition of producing some good players. But I think Burkina Faso is another team who performed very well uh, at the last AFCON and have one of my favorite players in world football right now, who's uh, Edmund Tapsova, who's flying uh, under Xabi Alonso in, in Germany. And so, uh, you know, I, I think they are a team that can definitely pull some surprises and did so in the last AFCON. Uh, so maybe we don't necessarily consider them a surprise, but they have the power. They also have a, a player called Dango Watara, who you're all familiar with at Bournemouth, uh, 21 years old, already seven goals for Burkina Faso. So uh, he will play a key role as well. They have some talent uh, and, and they can definitely do some damage. Umbizo, my dark horse is Mali as well, just because they do have a really strong midfielder. It reminds me of what Ghana should be in terms of when they had Essien and Suli Mantari. But what would you predict in this opening round of AFCON games. What, you don't have to give me the winner of, of the African no, no. Nations. Give, well, give the winner. Well, give, no, give me your prediction after just the, the opening round matches. Who stands Ooh. out? Which, which country do you think you're impressed by? I want to have the winner too. 
Of course you, <laughs> you do. Guys, you guys love to put me under pressure early in the morning. Um, look, I, I, I think I'll go with the winner, okay? Um, I, I truly and honestly believe that uh, Ivory Coast is being underestimated. I think we've spoken about a lot of favorites, uh, and it doesn't seem that many people are placing Ivory Coast as among them. But when you look at their team sheet, you look at their history, uh, and you look at the fact that they are the host, I think, I think they really have a big chance to win this tournament. Uh, but this is the most unpredictable uh, AFCON I think there's ever been. Um, so many teams are so good with so many talented players, so it is very difficult to predict. But if I'm going to choose one, I'm gonna stake. I'm gonna stake it all on uh, Ivory Coast and wow. hope that they what about, wow. what about my my wow. Gambians? How, how, how's Gambia uh, looking? <laughs> actually, Gambia is quite good. Um, they are also a team who who have emerged with some talented players. Uh, some of them playing in, uh, for example, Italy. Uh, others are spread across uh, uh, the the European continent. Uh, unfortunately, many of them arrived in these situations uh, due, uh, under duress. Uh, as refugees and so on and so forth. It wasn't necessarily a deliberate uh, football development uh, and socio sort of political development. Uh, but nonetheless, these players have emerged. Uh, and, and Gambia, is, they're no slouch, in my opinion. They can beat anyone on their day if they're taken too lightly. Um, so, my dad yeah, will be watching don't worry closely. about your boys. I think they'll, they'll impress. Okay, my dad will be watching yeah, closely. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You, Bezo, you're making him feel hey, good. Hey, Youth World Cup, they've been doing well. It's all right, and Bezo, it's Come fine. On now. My goodness. It's the and Christmas spirit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's still in the air. And Bezo, the boys put you under some serious pressure, and uh, you, you handled it beautifully, as always, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us once again.